Okay, so we are at 11.20ish, uh, so uh, I'll have to watch the clock and make sure I have enough time remaining um, until 11.40. So, yeah, that's why I looked at it. So, okay, this is the same question I've done in the past. So I'm gonna reset it and then, um, and, and then we'll come back and uh, redraw another question. Uh, and then try it again. <laughs> we can take it one more time because um, he has an in with the instructor and can get an additional attempt. Um, okay, uh, let's hope we don't get the same question another time. Uh, Okay, now it's a, a new question, so let me uh, let me do this one. So it says, standing waves on a string is one remarkable consequence of wave interference principle. You've seen it in the lab, and you've seen this demo in lecture videos. The picture below illustrates one example. Snapshots at two different moments. You can imagine one maximum position, another maximum position. Uh, like uh, this would be one moment and then this would be the other moment are uh, overlaid okay for each of the questions below uh, uh, if the standing wave shown above is shaking at a frequency of six hertz okay um so i think it's good for me to just start um, sketching things out so this is the standing wave that's shown and i hope you have enough intuition from having seen different types of standing waves that uh, that this is not the fundamental harmonic. This is not the longest wavelength that could uh, be on this medium with the boundary conditions of the nodes at the end point. So if we have, so let me start out with the longest wavelength, the standing wave. The longest wavelength standing wave will look like uh, something that fits half a wavelength within this distance, because that's the longest distance you can have and still have nodes at the end. So that would be the uh, some other frequency that also results in this. Oh, and I could have also gone to higher frequencies if I wanted to. But uh, let me just. Uh, they want uh, three other frequencies, so let me uh, do this. And the next uh, higher frequency or shorter wavelength would be what where there's an additional node in the middle. And there's a, that's the kind of the pattern that you see with the standing waves. When you're going from one harmonic to the next harmonic, the consistent thing you will find is the presence of additional nodes or additional antinodes if you want to count antinodes. Now, with that in mind, I think this is the next harmonic with the two notes, so I'm going to skip that. They've already given us the frequency for this thing, which is uh, 6 hertz, and we'll use that um, in the answering of the remainder of part A. So the skipping that, the next one would be one where I have one, two, three notes between the two end point notes. So something that looks like this. At some point, it should look like I'm just drawing sinusoidal waves of shorter and shorter frequency. Like at higher, higher harmonics, it becomes harder to distinguish between um, like what's uh, something that meets the standing wave con uh, condition versus what's just a random thing. You know? So, okay, now um, if they just asked me to show these shapes, I could have given this but they are asking for other frequencies that result in standing waves. So um, I have some length, and let me just make this easy for myself. Even though the question doesn't give me the length of the medium, and I guess properly speaking, I should be numbering, uh, labeling this like L for general stuff. I have a feeling the actual length doesn't matter. So I can just make it easy for myself and say, hey, my L is one meter. As long as, oh wait, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as my final expression doesn't really depend on, you know, meters, like quantities of length, I'll be fine. Um, so, 
So in figuring out frequency of all these other harmonics, um, I rely on the, the expression that you have seen and used for the lab, um, the relationship that uh, connects frequency, wavelength, and, um, and, the, <laughs> and the wave speed. So wave speed is equal to frequency times the wavelength. Uh, with the pictures drawn here, I can actually write down wavelengths right now. I can say, oh, this, what's here is half the wavelength. So the actual wavelength should be double that. So uh, it's going to be 2M. Here, my wavelength is exactly the length of the medium. And here, my wavelength is half of the medium. And to wrap this up here, my wavelength here would be um, uh, two thirds of the medium. Yeah, so two thirds, and and actually, I guess yeah, yeah. Let, let me just leave that there. So with uh, all these scenarios, it would be nice if we knew what the wave speed is. If we know wave speed from that and from knowing the wavelength we can work out the frequencies where this thing should resonate. And that's where you use the information given for the question. And in this setup is where you know the frequency and the wavelength. So you can figure out what your, um, what your wave speed is. Again, assuming that your length is one meter. If your length is some, uh, some other distance, your actual value of speed uh, will be different. <laughs> So let me do 6 hertz times 2 thirds meter. So 3 divided 6, 2, 2 times 2. So it should be 4 meters per second. So for all these frequencies, I can just do the... Uh, oh, so solving this for F, uh, F should be V over lambda. So take 4 divided by these numbers. So I would get 2 hertz, uh, 4 hertz, 6 hertz. And then uh, four divided by one half would be eight, eight hertz. And I hope the pattern um, that you see gives you confidence that these answers didn't actually depend on the, this assumption of any particular length. If I somehow kept this as a, um, as a you know a symbolic quantity, it would have canceled out in the algebra. Right? Just assigning it a random number just <laughs> makes the algebra slightly easier. And you know, that's all perfectly allowed as long as you know you realize what you're doing. So with that, um, yeah, I've already done all this. <laughs> if you're doing solving problems the way I recommend, you'll have done all this work as you're solving. So um, the frequencies, um, other possible frequencies are um, two hertz, Four hertz and eight hertz among others. Think basically all the even frequencies, because um, when you are starting out at two hertz, and all the harmonics will be multiples of those, so it will be multiple of two even. Um, okay, so when the end point is changed from fixed to loose end, right? Um, it changes the boundary condition, right? Uh, yeah, so. This is mostly a, I don't know, memory question. So if you remember the things you did for our standing waves lab, this should be super easy. Um, in the sense that, you know, um, from the pre-lab, <laughs> you remember that this is the kind of setup that, uh, that results in a, a node at this end that hasn't changed. And at the other end, um, where it's a, a frictionless ring, um, it becomes an antinode. It becomes much easier to move the string at this end, and this will be your antinode. Basically, whenever this portion of string moves up and down, it doesn't have to drag along something else that's to the right of it. That makes the boundary condition antinode. Um, so, so yeah, this is actually the first picture. This is the one that shows the longest wavelength the this uh, uh, distance of L fits only quarter of the uh, wavelength. So it's the longest wavelength. 
and then um, and I can draw a few more. I guess um, so I can do the boring thing and just to go up each time, one at a time. You so you know, I have an antinode. I'm gonna have antinode at this end, and so I need one more node somewhere. I'm trying to figure out where it would be. Okay, one more node somewhere here. And I'm trying to draw a sinusoidal wave. You know, starting a, like something that looks like a sign. It has to grow cross the axis at some point. That's gonna be my node, and then at the other end here, it'll be at the maximum if because uh, it's an antinode this time. So, so yeah, this is the next thing, but you know it doesn't say three uh, lowest frequencies. So I can do something more interesting than what I'm doing above, and I can basically do something like this. Um, I can just start a wave, just cross the axis willingly, however many times. All I need to make sure is the at the very end point, I end with antinode. Like that's the only thing that's really required. And however many times I, uh, so okay, this is a terrible drawing. Just imagine this is a regular looking sign or pseudo wave, not squiggly line. Um, but I can just count how many wavelengths fit here and work out what the frequency of this kind of randomly imagined uh, standing wave is. So, so okay. Um, no, it's just fine. But to, oh, so I think it's uh, assuming we will use the same value for the speed that we've used in previous question. So let me do that, because uh, otherwise there's no way to answer the question. <laughs> and that depends on a whole bunch of things. And and we are also continue to use this as the numerical value of speed. We are also continuing to assume that um, that our the length of the medium is one meter, the arbitrary value I assumed in part A above. So, so okay, I think it's worth just going through each of the pictures and coming up with an expression for the wavelength. Uh, wavelength here, again, this is a quarter of the whole wavelength. So uh, flipping that around, the wavelength should be four times this or four meters. That way I fit a quarter of it in one meters. Here, uh, I am fitting uh, three quarters of wavelength. So the wavelength in terms of meters should be, um, it, you know, it should have a quarter remaining. That's a little bit longer than a meter. So I think that's a four thirds m. That's right. Uh, take one meter, divided by three equal parts, multiply by four. Yeah, that'll give me wavelength. Um, oh, here. Okay, let me just count. I have one full wavelength. Two full wavelength, three full wavelength, four full wavelength, so four uh, plus one quarter. So 4.25 uh, wavelength is equal to the length of the medium. So solving this for wavelength, I get uh, that uh, uh, one divided by 4.25. I'll do that in calculator uh, times uh, meter. Because it's going to be times L, but L is one meter. So, so OK. So for the frequencies, all I need to do is continue to uh, use this formula. I will have a solved for uh, frequencies free over lambda. So frequency 1 here is this speed divided by that, or 1 hertz. Yeah, that's lower than the frequency we had above. And uh, frequency to here, and this is where you do have to be careful. It's not going to be double this because the boundary condition affects that pattern. Um, it'll be four divided by lambda. Okay, fours will cancel out. I'll get three, three hertz. And here it's a frequency of whatever harmonic. <laughs> I didn't carefully count, so I'm not sure. Now, if, if I do want to count, okay. So this was the second harmonic. So third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth the harmonic is what's going to be. Now you can count the number of nodes. That's a way to get to it, but not necessary. Let me just do one over four point two five in a calculator. So I don't think I can wait. Not one, four, four meters per second divided by four point two five. So that is uh, zero point nine four one uh, 
parts. That doesn't sound right. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, maybe. I'm not dividing by this. I'm dividing by this, which means actually multiplying by 4.25. So 4 times 4.25 or divided by 1 over 4.25. Okay, so that gives me a sort of 17. Okay, that looks about right. Um, 17 hertz. And there is a pattern here. I think the pattern is all the other integer multiples of this. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17. Uh, that's probably the pattern. So here, my answer should be uh, uh, frequencies of uh, 1 hertz. 3 hertz and 17 hertz are on resonance uh, and any other order multiple of 1 hertz. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, wait, wait, am I? I'm sorry, I spent too much time explaining. Four, yeah, I've got five minutes. Um, one striking feature is that. Explain the detail making. Okay, uh, I think I can um, just type it out here. So driving amplitude is small, but how do you build up a large amplitude? It's basically building up energy within the medium over many number of cycles. So on resonance, the driving force is at the exact right frequency to be adding. Um, mechanical energy to the system i.e. of oscillating string um, each cycle so um, uh, because this uh, energy build uh, energy build up can happen over many cycles uh, even with a small driving amplitude, if the damping uh, factors are small enough, the uh, large amplitude of oscillation can build up over time. So what's important is the over time part. Uh, when we are looking at these pictures, we are looking at a stable picture where energy taken up by damping is equal to the additional energy put in uh, by the driving thing. Um, in the simulation, you know, I usually turn off the damping altogether, so something else weird happens, but let's not get into that. Um, yeah. Okay, well, one of the parameters is the amount of tension. If you want to, so, um, so V is equal to square root of T over mu. <laughs> uh, one of the formulas that's uh, nice to have memorized. Uh, I think that's going to be related because they mentioned the tension. Uh, T here is the tension. Uh, resonant gave in A and B. If you want to keep the same shape of the standing waves while doubling the frequencies of resonances, how would you change the tension in the string? Ah. So we go back to the expression here. So frequencies of the standing waves, it depends on the wave speed. And uh, before we uh, got this wave speed, some, uh, or I guess, we assume the length. So exact values doesn't matter. What's relevant is that we want this frequency to increase by a, by a factor of two. And the wavelength won't change because this pattern won't change. So wave speed needs to change, increase by a factor of two. So uh, to double the frequency of the standing waves, we need to increase the wave speed by a factor of two uh, from three over lambda um, in order to increase the wave speed by a factor of two uh, to be the change in the linear mass density in of the string. Uh, we need to increase tension force t by a factor of four, so that after taking square root, it'll uh, have increased the wave speed by a factor of two. So yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, so you know this is uh, it, 
shouldn't be a difficult question. It's not meant to be a difficult question. So, um, so, so yeah, um, I'm just gonna let the time run out and um, attach my work after the time runs out. Because I think if you were adding work while the time runs out, sometimes you can get kicked out. I don't wanna deal with those um, situations. So let me just use this time to label A and B. And I think C and D I gave enough answer here that I don't really need to attach additional work. Oh, a lot of time. So yeah, this is the second of the questions in the question pool. And uh, as I was saying, and as you have seen, there aren't that many questions in the question pool. Uh, there's a very good chance that you will see one of the two questions I have done. And if you're somehow unlucky and you get the other question that I haven't done, then uh, do your best. Again, this is a super low stress, low, um, low anxiety item. Uh, what you get here, literally, very close to literally won't change your grade. And if there's any chance of what happens here changing your grade, we'll have a meeting. So it's not like uh, something happens here and there's nothing. Like, no, no, that, that's, I can guarantee you that's not the situation. If something that I can imagine happens while you are taking this assessment and we have to talk about its impact on your grade, we'll have a meeting. So uh, we'll have a meeting where, uh, where the outcome isn't predetermined. So, all right, that's my work. I think I'm all set. Let me just save work and continue.